Well, good afternoon and welcome to the Idahoan Show. I am filming this in the second week of April and the snow drifts are still higher than my bench rest. That is not normal for this part of Idaho. Uh, normally, we would expect the spring thaw to break in about the second week of March. You know, that's when we would expect the landscape to transition from being mostly snow covered with patches of bare ground here and there to being mostly bare ground with patches of lingering snow here and there. Uh, but that transition has not happened yet this year, and we're already a month late. The way things are going, it may be the second week of May before we start to see a significant amount of bare ground. Who knows? Uh, anyways, I'm out here at the range today, in spite of the snow, uh, trying to test a very simple accessory. Uh, this is a plastic cap that I designed to fit over a standard mil-spec birdcage flash hider. Uh, the idea being that if you slip and happen to plant your muzzle in the snow or in the mud, it will keep you from getting snow or mud into the bore and causing a bore obstruction. So first of all, we just need to try it out and see if it actually keeps stuff from getting in the muzzle. Looks like it worked. Yep. Nothing got inside the birdcage. Well, it looks like it works okay in mud, too. Hopefully you can see there, nothing got inside the cap. But now the other thing that I think we need to test here is, well, what if you're carrying the gun with the cap on it, uh, you know, to protect it in the event that you fall in the mud, and instead of falling in the mud, you find yourself in a situation where you need the gun in a hurry or maybe you just forget to take the cap off before you go to take a shot. Uh, what's going to happen then? You know, I don't think that shooting through the cap is going to be functionally a problem. I mean, I, I expect it's going to destroy the cap. I'm pretty sure it's not going to damage the gun or pose any kind of a hazard to the shooter. But I am curious to see if it would noticeably deflect the bullet or change the point of impact. Uh, so. I'm going to shoot a group on a target down there at 25 yards uh, without the cap, and then I've got several caps that we can blow up and see if they cause a change in the point of impact. Well, as you can see, my scope is not exactly zeroed for this round at this distance. Uh, I probably zeroed it using full metal jacket rounds, and then for this test, I switched to hollow point rounds because I figured that would be sort of a worst case scenario for having to shoot through the cap. Uh, now, if we look at the target, though, we do see a little bit of a shift. Uh, the average point of impact of a five-shot group shifted about an inch. Uh, and it also opened up, probably almost doubled in size. But 
we're still shooting like a two inch group at 25 yards and the point of impact didn't shift that much. And we've still got five nice round holes. Uh, so, you know, I'm not seeing any evidence of key holing, let alone evidence of the bullets, you know, fragmenting or something, uh, you know, taking damage as they go through the cap. Uh, so I'm gonna say that that is a pretty satisfactory result. Um, obviously, if you're going to do long-range precision shooting, you'd want to take the cap off to get maximum consistency, but that's not really the scenario that I'm worried about. Uh, I figure if I don't have time to take the cap off, I'm probably dealing with a relatively large target at relatively close range. Well, in conclusion, I'd say that my 3D printed muzzle caps are working pretty well. Uh, they're not overly difficult to get on and off, but they do seem to hold reasonably securely. I didn't have any problems with them coming off when I stuck the muzzle in the snow or in the mud. Uh, if I have to shoot through them, I can. Uh, it may deflect the bullet a little bit, but not enough to be a problem. Uh, obviously, shooting through the cap will destroy the cap, but uh, printing these from, you know, Sun Lu PETG, I'm sure that I'm paying less for the cap than I am for a single round of 223 ammunition. So they can be considered somewhat disposable. Anyway, I think that concludes our test. Uh, naturally, I will post the STL file for these caps on my website. And until next time, thank you for watching The Idahoan Show.